continue to work on. That's, 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 part, that's, that's, that's not just part of the vision. That is the vision. <laughs> Everything else, which we have vision for, will flow out of that. If we, if we, we, we do a lot of stuff and we don't have a move of God, we, we, in my opinion, we're not doing much. Amen. We're not doing much. So it's all going to flow out of, out of the abundance of, of prayer. So we'll, 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 that starts in September, but we'll be talking about that. But here in the book of, book of Isaiah, not Isaiah, I'm sorry, uh, Matthew, Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17, I'm going to talk about out of here one of, the, one of the miracles in the ministry of Jesus in Matthew chapter 17. And it talks, about, talks also about faith. Matthew 17, let's, let's read in your Bibles, turn your Bible. I won't read this whole thing, but uh, you know the story. The, the disciples have, have, have failed in their attempt to get this young boy set free. And so after Jesus sets him free, so that proves it was the will of God for him to be free, even though they couldn't get him free. Amen? Amen. Amen. You don't want to build a theology off of, off of a failure. <laughs> Amen. You want to you you be corrected. By the word, amen, and learn and grow and be, and be, 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 uh, be, be strengthened, amen. Okay, then Jesus said, said in verse, uh, let's go to what he said, verse 19. The disciples came to Jesus privately saying, why could we not cast it out? It's a good question. Jesus said to them, because of your, I'm reading New King James, because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief. He's brutal, Amen. <laughs> no, he, he's a teacher. They came to him in honesty. Now he's going to give them an honest answer. Because of your unbelief, or surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, remove from here to there, and it will move, and nothing, nothing will be impossible for you. Nothing. However, this kind does not come out except by prayer and, and fasting. So Jesus here is, uh, is uh, the Bible here is giving us this, this miracle where the disciples could not cast out this demon. There's no question from the Bible, Matthew chapter 10 and other scriptures, that they had authority and power from Jesus to cast out all demons, including this one, right? But they had to receive it. They had to believe it. And then they had to be totally committed to that power that they had received from Jesus. And that was, that was, that was, it had, it was faith. Because that proves that, you know, even though Matthew chapter 10, he gave them power, Luke chapter 9 gave them power and authority over all demons, it proves that that power was activated by faith. They didn't just walk around feeling it all the time. Amen. So they had to act in faith, they had to move in faith, but they had to receive it. Matthew chapter Chapter 10, verse 8, the Bible says, freely you have received, freely give. So it had to be received. Jesus was giving power. He was giving authority, but it had to be received. Amen. And that's, that's a good scripture just to camp out on for a while. To receive. It had to be received. Number two, it, after receiving it, you have got to believe it. Believe what? Believe you have it. Right? Are you with me? Matthew chapter 10, verse 8, freely you've received, freely give. Then, you, then you've got to believe you got it even when you don't feel it. Right? And if you look in Acts chapter, Acts chapter 3, I'm just going to kind of meander around here for a minute, but Acts chapter 3, in Acts chapter 3, Peter meets a, a man at the gate called Beautiful, and he, and he uses a terminology there that re reflects all the way back to Matthew chapter 10. He's at the gate called Beautiful. He looks at the crippled man. He says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give to you. That's exactly what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10, verse, verse 8. Freely you've received, now freely give. Peter says, such as I have, evidently he had received it, such as I have, I give it to you. I give it to you. I give it to you. Where did he get that, that kind of thought? Where did he get that, that confidence? Where did that come from? It arose out of his fellowship with Jesus and him hearing what Jesus said. He said, I've received it, so I have it. I have it. Amen. And I'm going to give it to you. 
I'm going to give it to you. Now, there's some powerful, powerful lessons in ministry there, especially in the area of healing. Um, you, number one, you've got to believe you have it. You've got to believe you have it. Now, I'm not talking about, it. I'm not talking about me. You know, I'm, I'm, I've got pain in my body and, you know, Mark 11, 24, I believe, you know, I believe I received it and all that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about as a minister. I believe I've got to have it. That is, I've got the power. I've got the power. I have the authority to set you free. I have to believe that. I have the power to set you free. But I have to have it at such a level, a confidence in it, that I'm going to tell you that before I, before I do anything. Amen. Peter demonstrated, he illustrated what Jesus told them to do from Matthew 10. Such as I have... I, you, I don't believe that was the first time he ever said that. Amen. Such as I have, I give to you. I, I give to you. I, I give to you. Now, we, 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 we trip at that point. I mean, not you, many people. I, I give to you. What do you mean I give to you? God is the healer. Yeah, he's the healer, but he gave you the power to do it. Amen. You've got to understand how that works. It don't work the way you think it works. It works the way the Bible says it works. He gives you power and expects you to do it. Amen. He expects you, he expects you to do it. Amen. Amen. Uh, sitting here, here today, uh, Joe and Nancy Slater, and Nancy talked to me the other day about, what's her name? Beatrice. About Beatrice the horse. Amen. And Beatrice the horse, according to, they can help me tell the story, NC State, uh, veterinarian hospital was recommended to be put down her case was impossible the horse should be put down so praise the Lord we went over there to their house and uh, and and I explained that very what I just told you I explained that to 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 to, to dawn and to the family I said this is what you have to say when you lay your hand on the horse all right I'm gonna teach you how to heal a horse now I know you need to know that amen <laughs> <laughs> okay, because if it'll work on a horse, for sure it'll work on a human. All right? <laughs> I mean, why does God care about a horse? God cares about a horse because people are in love with that horse. And he wants to show himself good in the lives of those kids, those grandkids. Amen? Praise the Lord. So I, this is what I said you say. You lay your hand on the horse and you say, I heal this horse in the name of Jesus. I do it. I said, if you're waiting for God to do it, then, then you, you're, you're, you disconnect there somewhat because God already decided how he was going to do it, and he's going to do it through you. Amen? Amen. So we, we shift into a place of, faith, of hope, disconnect from faith, waiting for God to do it. God said, I gave it to you. I expect you to believe you have it. Now apply it. Use it. Amen? Lay your hand on the horse and say, I heal this horse in the name of Jesus. Amen? And, and, and uh, praise the Lord, the, um, I should have Nancy tell the story, but the guy that does the, the horseshoes, what's he called? The farrier said, after just the other day, he said, I've never seen this kind of miracle. The, the, the part in that horse has grown back. It's a creative miracle. Amen. It grew back. <laughs> Amen. Wow. Well, if, 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 if we can heal a horse... Who, who's not, wasn't paid for by the blood of Jesus. The horse is only a part of the blessing because the blessing's on the people. Amen. So if we can heal a horse, then, then obviously we can heal people. But it works the same way. Amen. You've got to be like Peter. Peter wasn't special in the fact that he had it and he could say that and nobody else, but nobody else can. You've got to believe you have it. You have it and you tell somebody. I have, I have God has anointed me. I have power. There's an authority in my life. It's a grace in my life to heal you. Now, you'll be amazed. You heard me say this before. You'll be amazed at how many times I've said that to somebody and the power of God came on them while I was saying it. The anointing came on them while I was saying it. Amen. So, so here these people are. They've got it. They've done that many times, but, but they fall short this time. Now, I want to look at that for a minute, all right? The Bible says the disciples, uh, and then came the came disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could not we cast it out? All right. So, obviously, there was something missing. Because all that I said to you, they already knew. But obviously, there's something missing. And so we want to we just dig here for just a minute and see what possibly that was and, and talk about that for just a few minutes, all right? 
So Jesus said, verse 20, because of your unbelief. Now let's look at the word unbelief. The word unbelief there in the, in the King James means just that. It means unbelief. But if you go to some of the more modern translations, uh, New American Standard, uh, possibly NIV, etc., they translate it as littleness of faith. Littleness of faith. Put up, put up New American Standard there, possibly. Uh, new, the littleness of your faith. Because of the littleness of your faith. Now, which, which translation is correct? Well, they're both correct. Let's just accept that, all right? Because unless you're going to get into textual criticism type study and study the original text, and none of us here have the, has the expertise of the Greek or the Hebrew to be able to do that. So let's accept them both, all right? So why would, why would they, why would suddenly these apostles, why would suddenly these apostles be in a place of littleness of faith? Because of unbelief. Right? I mean, are you going to tell me that, these, that this man who walked on water doesn't have faith? Well, he's got faith, but at this given moment, he, he's, he's fought. Well, now, Peter wasn't part of that, that group. It was, he was with Jesus on the mountain. <laughs> anyway, but, but these three guys uh, have got it. But the littlest, because of the littleness of your faith. Now, why was their faith little at that moment? Their faith was little because, why? Because of unbelief, right? So what, in what way, in what way was there, was unbelief, being, uh, being uh, demonstrated or manifested here on this occasion. Well, when we start studying the word little, it may not only be used in the sense of a, a measure, like, like a cup versus a quart or, or a pound versus, uh, versus 10 pounds. We look at it like little like that. They didn't have enough. But the word little can also be used as a measure of time. They gave up too soon. They gave up too quick. It was working, but they couldn't see it working, so they gave up. Right? See, the fundamental meaning of faith, fundamentally, the meaning is trust. It's trust. So in that way, it's not something you have, but it's something you do. Faith is an action word. Someone said that faith is a noun, something you have, ver believe is a verb, something you do. But nevertheless, faith, whether it's a noun or a verb, it, it describes an action. If I could, if I could, if I could, if I could erase, erase some thoughts in people's heads, it would be just that. I, I would convince you that faith is not something you have, it's something you do. Faith is an action. Faith is an action. Amen. Faith is an action. Amen? Faith is an action. It's an action word. And so in order for faith to work, you've got to couple it with, with patience. It's got to be coupled with, what we, we, I like the word persistence. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12, speaking about the faith of Abraham and the other, other fathers of the faith. The Bible says that you be not slothful or lazy, but followers or imitators of those who through faith and patience, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12, faith and patience inherit the promises. So it takes, according to this scripture, it takes more than faith to get the promise. It takes patience. Now, patience isn't the thought of sitting around in the easy chair and not doing anything. Faith, patience is actually the word perseverance. That is, it is the continuing to act in faith. It is continuing to act in faith even when you're not at that moment seeing any results. It's continuing to act in faith. So faith and patience. So if there's faith, but if you, run, if you quit acting in faith, it becomes what? It becomes unbelief. Come on, somebody help me. Say amen. Amen. So we've got to put persistence. Persistence. Amen. Persistence. Praise the Lord. Now, in Luke chapter 11, verse 5, Luke chapter 11, verse 5, Jesus tells a parable here that really illustrates something about this that I want to look at real quick. Luke 11, verse 5, he said unto them, which of you shall have a friend? Luke 11, verse 5, which of you shall have a friend and shall, and shall go unto him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves. Now, now, highlight here, the fact is he's going to a friend, but it's midnight. You can have a friend, but there are, there are, <laughs> there are, uh, there are, 
There are limits, there are lines. There, there are certain times. There are certain times you don't call. Right? It's a common courtesy. There are certain times you don't call them. They're, they're in bed. They're asleep. Come on now. But this guy, he doesn't recognize any of the common courtesies. And so he calls, he calls at midnight and he says, friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine, his journey has come to me and I have nothing to set before him. And, and, and he from within shall answer and say, trouble me not. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give you. In verse 8, Jesus said, I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend. All right, in other words, the, the rules of being a friend do not include getting up at midnight, answering the phone at midnight. All right, whatever rules society has, that's a violation of those friend rules. Though he will not rise and give him because he's his friend, yet because of his, and there's a word here, it, because of his New King James persistence, Old King James importunity, which I, we don't understand. <laughs> We don't have a clue what that means, amen? Yet because of his persistence, because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. Now when you dig into that word persistence, that's what I want to talk about for just a minute, persistence, right? You dig into that word importunity from the old King James, it means shamelessness. Shamelessness. I would have called him at midnight, but I didn't want to get him out of bed. I know he's my friend, but it's past midnight now, and I can't call him. But faith took him to another realm. Faith took him to a place of persistence that, that broke all the rules. Broke all the rules. And said, it doesn't matter what the rules of friendship are. It doesn't matter what the rules of religion are. Does it even matter what the local law says? I'm going to have a miracle. I've got to have what I've got to have, and I'm going to get it tonight. Amen? Amen? And so there is a lesson in persistence here, importunity. Here's one definition from one of the Greek commentaries I have. It's shamelessness, hence persistence, without regard to time, place, or person. It's shamelessness. It, and then if you look it up in the Webster, it means to be discourteous, disrespectful, impolite, incivil, incivility, inconsiderate, rudeness. There's a persistence that crosses every barrier. There's a persistence that, that crosses every line. And when you understand that from, the, from this scripture, then you take that and you look and you examine the miracles of Jesus. That was an element in every single story in the miracles of Jesus. Every single one of them. It was never just Jesus sitting under a tree drinking a cold drink. And they walked up and said, hey, Jesus, if, you, if, you, if I, don't, I want to bother you, but if you got a little bit of time, I want you to pray for me. And then he healed him. It was never that way. It was never that easy. Getting to him, getting his attention was always, always not easy. Amen. I mean, think about the woman... The woman with the issue of blood. I mean, according to, the, according to the law, having a bleeding disorder, she's as unclean as a leper. And she's not allowed in that crowd. She is not allowed in the crowd. She had to break every rule to get to him. There was a persistence that took her, even in the fear of death, because if the, if the synagogue people had seen her in that crowd and recognized her, they would have stoned her to death. But there was, there was this persistence inside of her that says, I'm willing to break every rule. I'm going to cross every line. Amen. I'm, I'm going to, and I'm going to touch Jesus. Amen. The paralyzed man. Think about the paralyzed man. Here's a man that's paralyzed. And, he, and his four friends carry him to Jesus. Only when they get to where Jesus is, the crowd, the house is packed out. They can't get in the house. So what did they do? They went up on the roof. And then they did something else. <laughs> Amen. They started, they got a shovel. And they got a, they got a, they got a, they got a sledgehammer. And they started digging. I mean, they broke every rule. I mean, who are these people? Crazy. Amen. And they dug a hole in the man's roof. Amen. 
And when they lowered down in the presence of Jesus, Jesus said, man, here's some faith. <laughs> Amen. But it took persistence to get him there. What about, what about blind Bartimaeus? Here's blind Bartimaeus. You know, son of David, have mercy on me. And the crowd turned on him. Be quiet, blind man. And someone always said, religion and the world will always join forces. Religion, the world, and the devil always join forces to drown out that voice that cries out to God. But as soon as they said to him, Bartimaeus, don't, don't bother him. He's not here to listen to you. The Bible said that he cried out all the more. He got louder. He turned up the volume. Hello, somebody say amen. amen. It's shameless persistence. It's shameless persistence. What about the Syrophoenician lady? Calling out after them. Jesus ignoring her. He's acting like she, he doesn't hear her at all. Until finally the disciples came to her him and said, please send her away. Amen. And Jesus says to the woman, you know, I can't, I can't heal you because this is only for the children. This is the children's bread. And she wouldn't still give up. She said, yet the dogs eat from the crumbs. She said, Jesus, I don't need a whole loaf. I don't need a slice. I just need a crumb. I don't need much. I just need one little crumb. Her persistence, her shameless persistence brought her to the feet of Jesus where she would not quit, she would not give up, and she received the miracle that God said that she could have. Say amen. And so we've got to join, we've got to join persistence. Maybe, maybe you've prayed, maybe the situation you've prayed about, maybe you've even fasted about it. And you've confessed it and you've, you've meditated on it and it isn't happening. Well, I'm just telling you, faith and persistence, shameless persistence, will get you everything you need, every answer you need. Somebody say amen. 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 So we just can't ever give up. You can't ever give up. And, you know, if you study the men of God of old, that was one of the things that just absolutely stands out and it made them stand out from the crowd. Everybody's heard the story about, probably about uh, Smith, Wigglesworth and raising the dead you know went into that the, 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 the casket was in the house he, took, he takes the corpse out of the casket and slams him against the wall and tells him to live and, and the thing the, the corpse falls on the floor picks it back up and slams it against the wall and says live in Jesus name amen well number one all of us including me <laughs> Amen. We're not pulling that corpse out of that casket. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I mean, that's all. You don't cross that line. <laughs> that's a line you don't cross. Amen. Mm. Persistent, shameless persistence. What's that? Boy, okay. Thank you. Anybody else in that category? Raise your hand. All right, two hands. Oh, three hands. Okay. Rest of you will leave alone. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So Jesus, Jesus heals. He heals these people. We see that throughout, throughout the scripture. We see that throughout the word of God. Every miracle in the ministry of Jesus was an act of faith with power. And we could talk about that for a few minutes, but I, don't, I, want, I want to go to something else real quick. So we see that throughout the scripture, the miracles in the ministry of Jesus, these miracles in the ministry of Jesus. Now go over here to Matthew chapter 13, Matthew chapter 13 and verse 31. Matthew chapter 13, verse 31. Now I was, listen, there are times when I, met, I intentionally meditate on certain scriptures. I have, I have, I have scriptures that I meditate on. I've, I've got several, I've got several meditations. I, I was talking to Trevor today. I've got, I got a, I've got an Ephesians meditation that I go from Ephesians chapter 1 all the way through chapter 6. And that there are specific scriptures in every chapter that I meditate on. Amen? And by the time I get done, I'm supercharged. Hallelujah. Then there are other times when suddenly out of nowhere, suddenly out of nowhere, a scripture comes to me. Totally, I don't remember the last time I read it. I don't know where I heard it last, when suddenly it just, it just, like it falls out of the sky. It falls on me. There's a scripture rises up in my spirit. And it's just, it don't just, I don't just pass through my head. It rises up in my spirit and it's present. That scripture is present inside of me. It's there and it's talking to me. Amen. Something is going on. 
and I've got to stop and take, take notes. I've had that happen. I've had that happen. I've had that happen in a dream. I had a dream about a scripture. I dreamed, and I think I, it seemed like I dreamed all night long about that scripture. And I woke up, and when I woke up, I suddenly woke up, that scripture was still going over my head. It was still working on me, working in me. Amen. And, and this is, this is, I don't know, this is, one, this is one of those scriptures right here in Matthew chapter 13. And I want to give you, I just want to give you a point of view, okay? Something to think about that, that I feel like the Lord just started dealing with me about, all right? Matthew chapter 13, verse 31. I'll read this. He said, and I, then I want to go to another translation, read another translation. Matthew chapter 13, 31. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in a field, which indeed is the least of all seeds, is the smallest. And when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Now, I'm gonna switch over here to the the Message Bible. The Message Bible in uh, in that, and I wanna read that same, same scripture if I can find it really quick here. Hallelujah. Amen. Are y'all still with me? Praise the Lord. Here it is. All right. Here we go. All right. Now listen to this. Another story, God's kingdom is like a pine nut. I don't know why he uses a pine nut, but that's what he does. This, this, this one just says acorn. That's fine too. All right. God's kingdom is like an acorn. This is pine nut. God's kingdom is like a pine nut that a farmer plants. It is quite small as seeds go, but in the course of years, it grows into a huge pine tree and eagles build nests in it. Hallelujah. Amen. And eagles build nests in it. Now what I want you to see here is, is that Jesus in these miracles throughout the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus Jesus is planting the seed of faith. Jesus is doing the work of faith with power. He's planting the seed of faith in the earth. Are you with me? I want to stop right there. I'm going to show you a scripture. All right. Galatians chapter 3 verse 23. The scripture says in Galatians 3 23, before faith came, Before faith came, Galatians chapter 3, verse 23. Before faith came, stop right there. So there was a time when faith came. There was a time when faith wasn't present. Then there was a time that faith came. Now in this scripture, he's, he's not necessarily talking about you or me individually. He's talking about the earth. He's talking faith. He's talking about Jesus. Right? Jesus is the Word. He's, he's, the, he's the Word incarnate, but He's also the very embodiment of faith. Before faith came, we were kept under guard by the law, kept for the faith which would afterward be revealed. Now, we're going to drop down a couple of verses. To ver- let's read verse 24. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we, should, that we might be justified by faith. Verse 25. But after f- that faith has come, but after faith has come, We're no longer under a schoolmaster, under a tutor. All right. So Jesus is planting the seed of faith in the earth. He has the blind man healed. He has the the, the paralyzed man healed. (coughs) He has the the leper is healed. Those are work of faith with power. He's planting the seed of faith in the earth. But then what happens? What happens after that? His, His... His ministry becomes massive. It grows. He builds, and then then over time, over the next, you know, 2,000 years, he builds the worldwide church. Right? So in Matthew chapter 13, Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like, the Bible says the kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed or like a a, a pine nut or like like an acorn, which a man took and sowed in his field. That's an act of faith. That's an act of faith. Amen. That's an act of faith. So, so here, 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 here we are. We're, we're, we're studying, we're praying, we're believing. 
And so now we began to experience, we began to experience the work of the Holy Spirit. We began to experience the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And we began to get testimonies. Now let's just, just focus on healing. We began to get healing testimonies. The horse is healed. Amen. And, and other people are healed. We began to get testimonies. Or let's, let's take another thing. Maybe, maybe you're, maybe you're a, a part of the, the outreach team and people start getting saved. You have this person get saved, this person get saved. Or maybe you're going to be, God's, gonna, God's anointing on you, you're, you're, you're going to get involved in discipleship. And so you sit down with a, a, a young believer and you build a relationship and you pour into them and you help them begin to grow and get on their feet in the Lord. That's discipleship. Amen. Or maybe the, the Spirit of the Lord is working through you and God uses you to bring deliverance to somebody and you, you cast the demon and break the chains of darkness that are in their life. They're set free. All right? So that, those, those individual workings of the Holy Spirit, the manifestation of God in and through your life are happening. All right? So that, that, that's really the planting of the, of the seed. You're just getting started. Now you can, you can build your whole life around one miracle. But you just understand that that's just the start. That's just the starting point. Amen. That's just the starting point. It, Jesus could have spent, the, he could have said, time out. I'm not dying at 30. I'll live to be 80. And I'm going to just go everywhere and heal people for the rest of my life. <laughs> he could just heal individuals. But it was God's intention that he, that he would build something. He would build something that, would have, that had structure. He would build something that would be permanent. He would build something that would be a blessing to people in the earth for thousands of years. And that's exactly what he did. Amen. That's exactly what he did. Now, there's a principle there that I, I want you to see, right? Is that in the beginning steps of God teaching us and using us, we're going to have testimonies. Let's just use healing. We're going to have testimonies of healing. And then by God's grace, we'll get better at it. You become more effective at it. Isn't it right? But at some point in that process, your brain has got to see a bigger picture. God wants me to build something. God wants me to build something. It's not enough to get one person healed, one person saved, and do that from time to time. God says, I want you to build something. The kingdom of God is like a man that sows a seed. And he sows a seed and it does what? It grows and becomes an er a great herb, he says. And then it grows and becomes a great tree. But when it becomes a great tree, the Bible says that the birds, or I like what message said, the eagles come and they nest in that tree. That, that massive tree now becomes a place where people can come continually and pull fruit where people can lodge in the, in, in, under the shade of that huge tree and be benefited and blessed because of that huge tree. Because you are not satisfied with just, yes, I had a testimony. I got another testimony. Yeah, we got to have the testimonies and we never outgrow that. Amen. But at some point, we got to say, wait a minute now. God wants me to build something. God wants me to build something. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. Amen. Say amen. amen. He wants us to build something. And that's, that's, where, that's where God is bringing cornerstone. In these individual areas, God is wanting us to build something. He's wanting us to build something. He's wanting us to build something. Amen. amen. We, have, we have healing school. What's it, what's it, what's it try? I mean, we've been having healing school for a couple of years now. What, what, what are we trying to do in healing school? We're just trying to get a couple of people healed? No, we're not trying to get a couple of people healed. We're trying, to get, we're trying to empower everybody to minister healing. Amen. We're trying to raise up an army. Amen. We're, we're, that's what we're trusting God for. Amen. Amen. I mean, in uh, Street Reach and in Lifeline, what are we trying to do? Just win a couple of people to Jesus? No, we're trying to build a soul-winning ministry that is a permanent part of this church. And everybody, everybody plugs in. Everybody gets involved in some way. Amen. What about prayer ministry? That's just for a handful of people. No, God wants us to build a prayer ministry, a prayer ministry that includes everybody. Everybody is involved, and it becomes like this massive tree. Massive tree that people can come from all over the world and pull and eat from the fruit and eat from the leaves and hide and, and get, get comfort from the shade. Amen. Faith. 
Hallelujah. I'm just trying to get healed, Pastor. Well, praise the Lord. Don't give up. Amen. But it's bigger than that. It's bigger than me getting healed. Then it becomes me getting you healed. Then it becomes, wow, we can, we can build something. Amen. We can build something massive here. And massive don't always necessarily mean size, but I mean massive in the spirit. Amen. A massive in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So the kingdom, let's put that back up there. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, verse 31. Put it up in the message Bible. The kingdom of God is like unto a, a, a mustard seed. Okay, it's new king, it's fine. Mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. I believe that sowing of that seed is an act of, act of individual faith. Another story, God's kingdom is like an acorn that a man plants. It's quite small as the seeds go, but in the course of years, it grows into a huge oak tree. I don't want to be, and, and, and by God's grace, I'm not, I don't want to be talking about what God did 20 years ago, 20 years from now. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So God wants us to build something. Everybody already knew that. I could have just shortcutted it and let you testify. Say, hey, God wants us to build something. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go home. <laughs> That's what faith is all about. Amen. Le learning how to use your faith. Learning how to, how to use your faith. Not only to get yourself, the moment you get, use your faith and get yourself free and get yourself healed, then learning how to use your faith and get somebody else set free and somebody else healed. Amen. Amen. And then, then beyond that, beginning, beginning to build something, begin to train some other people to teach them what you know until it becomes something. To just saturates and permeates through the whole church. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 I believe that I believe that America I believe that America despite what you may see or think I believe America is 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 more ripe today for revival than it's ever been. Yeah. Amen. It's more ripe today for for revival than it's ever been. Some of these communities that around even around about the church here here in in Fuquay, Garner, Raleigh wherever some of these communities are, 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 are about as pagan as, as, these, as, as, as African villages back in the bush that, the, that the, 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 the missionary hadn't even got there yet. Amen. You say, well, why is, why is that a good thing? Well, it's not a good thing in one sense, but on the other side, it's, it's, that's, where the, that's where the explosions take place. Amen. That's where, that's where the explosions take place. Amen. I mean, we have, we, we're, we're increasingly living in a pagan society. And, uh, and, and, and God is raising up a church that's going to, going to be effective and powerful to demonstrate the work of Jesus in those places. Praise the Lord. Amen. How many of you believe that? Say amen. amen. And you absolutely are part of that. You're a part of that. Amen. And I want to challenge you, and I'm, I'm about done. I know I should be quitting, but, but I, want to I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you that if you're, not, if you're not personally, on your personal level, if you're not getting testimonies, you're not getting testimonies, then you, you, need, you need to challenge, you need to challenge yourself and how you think. You need to challenge yourself. You need to go back and, and reread some scriptures. Reread some scriptures that you think you understand and look at them again. 
Amen? Amen. I find in my own life that, 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 uh, that, that some of, some of the, the, and I'm not talking about the words, some of the long-held charismatic thought are, are, is, is, is about as, as, as bad as the old traditional thought in, in, in churches that don't have the move of the Holy Spirit. I know you don't like me saying that, but I'm going to say it. I'm, I'm honest. I'm just talking about myself. I, I, I've cha- I challenge myself, and I say, why do we say that? Why do we believe that? What, might, what brought us to that conclusion? Why do we say it like that? Why do we say it like that? And I found in my own life that when I thought through on that and I got a fresh, fresh look at Scripture, and I began to say, no, I don't think like that. I don't look at it like that. I found that opened me up to a fresh, a new and a fresh move of the Holy Spirit in my own life. Amen? So I want to challenge you to rethink. And how do you rethink? Some people don't ever rethink anything, but, but that's not you. You're going to, I want you to rethink what you think you know about some of even the fundamental scriptures. And I'm not, I'm not wanting you to go to heresy. I want you to go back there and look at what the Word actually says. Not what you think it says, or not what some preacher someday in the past said it said, but what it actually says. Because God is going to honor His Word, not the way we say it, not the way we preach it, but exactly the way it is. The way it is in the Scripture. Amen? So let's not not get results and think that's just normal. It's not normal not getting results. And what I mean by results is, I mean testimonies. Amen? I mean testimonies. You have to have testimonies in your life. You have to. Amen. Amen. That's fruit. That's the fruit of the Holy Spirit flowing in and out of your life. And you can have that. That's the main thing. All of, the, all of redemption, the blood and faith and the Holy Spirit says you can have testimonies in your life. And there are people all around you all the time that are hurting, people that are dying, people that are discouraged, people that are going to hell. That God really, really wants to use you to minister in their life. Even though you feel like you're not, maybe you, at times you feel like you're not qualified, you don't know enough, when actually you do. You really do. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's bow our heads. Father, thank you today for the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for the word of the Lord. Thank you, Father, as we just embrace the work of the Holy Spirit to be persistent. Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, I thank you for that, Lord. I give you praise for that, Lord. God, I thank you, Lord, that you are gathering us together here in this place to build something. But as your word says, a habitation of God through the Spirit. But a place where, where, there's not, where we don't have visitation, a place where we have a continuous habitation of a corporate anointing, a tangible anointing of the Holy Spirit that people experience and encounter when they walk into place. We thank you for that, Lord. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, I stir up the gift of the Spirit in every life. I stir it up. I fan the flame, the fire. But I stir it up, Lord. I stir it up, Lord, in Jesus' name. I stir it up, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I stir it up. Father, I thank you, Lord, there comes a fresh passion, Lord God, to see God manifest in every life. Lord, I thank you for that in Jesus' name. I thank you for that in the name of Jesus. I give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Anybody here tonight in pain? Anybody here tonight in pain? couple people. Amen. Well, let's pray for these guys. Come up here. Let's all stand up together. We join our heart and faith together. Pray. Amen. Come up here, Jackson. Praise the Lord. Amen. Where are you in pain at?
pray for him too. The end, right? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's all lift our hands up together. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Jackson, the power of the Holy Spirit is here. The power of the Holy Spirit is on me. Amen. It's the grace of God in my life to bring God's healing to you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Right now, the Spirit of the Lord is coming upon you right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the power of God to touch it. Jesus, 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 yes, Lord. Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you should have surrendered. That was... <laughs> you, 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 yeah, but you, you're, you're fighting the power that's trying to heal you. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right he's healing you anyway yes, yes, amen yes, praise god yes, yes, yes. hallelujah father from the top of his thank you there it is right there father by the holy spirit top of his head to the soles of his feet come out of his back in jesus name there it goes right there there it goes father thank you in jesus name thank you lord jesus leave his backbone in jesus name be free be free be free be free be free there, yeah, praise God, praise God, hallelujah. Now just use your back, just just move your back. Faith is an action, just do, just do that, move your back. Bend over, that's right, there, you can do it, yeah. It feels so much better than it did when I first came in, I can tell you that. Yeah? For 100%. 100%. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't even, I couldn't lift boxes, four, four gallons of paint. Pick up that pulpit. Just pick it up. Just pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. Woo -hoo. Oh my gracious. Amen. Amen. Wow. I couldn't. I like. I literally couldn't do anything. Wow. Praise God. Just lift your hands up. Amen. Jackson, the bigger thing God's doing in your life is just a just a fresh, fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. Revealing himself to you in a way, in a way that you've not known. Praise the Lord. He loves you. His hand is on your life. He's touching you. Lord, I give you praise. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that flows through his life, God. Lord, he, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jackson, I just feel, I just sense, I just feel like that you're going to start feeling the anointing of God. The anointing got in your hands. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And when that starts happening, I just want you to do whatever, <laughs> whatever the Lord tells you to do. Lay them, lay them on somebody that's hurting, somebody that's, that's not doing well. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lay, your hand, lay them on your brother today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Persistence. Persistence. Shameless persistence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, ma'am, were you in pain? You're back. Okay. God's healing backs tonight, I'm telling you. If you got a back thing tonight, come up here. Amen. How long you've suffered a while from that? Off and on? Huh? 16. Rod's putting you back. Amen. Praise God. Just lift your hands up. Let's just trust the Lord. To, you know, God can just put bone in there, whatever needs to be put in there. We're not going to tell him how to do his work, but just that's what we're asking for right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Since the Spirit of the Lord is coming on you. Hallelujah. Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, Thank you, Jesus. That's right. This pain has been an, an oppression in your life. Today, today, today the Lord is setting you free from that. He's setting you free from that in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I lay my hand on her. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, right down through your backbone, I command this to come out. 
come out in Jesus name be healed in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus I command every pain Wow into the I just felt the power of God go right through your backbone Jesus 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 sure sure <laughs> Jesus 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 come on everybody lift your hands up come on we lift our hands up to the Lord father we thank you tonight thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit thank you Lord thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hallelujah hallelujah that's right do what you couldn't do before move your back bend over touch your knees Just touch your knees that's right or touch the ground that's better praise the Lord hallelujah 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 glory hallelujah glory oh my wow praise the lord listen the power of god's on that woman yeah, yeah praise the lord praise the lord hallelujah 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 what's happening what's it's easy the lot. It's because I was so constricted. I almost didn't come to church because it hurts so bad. And I know it's the enemy. I know he's been on me. I've been, been attacked after attack. Hundred percent. Wow. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Come on. I'm going to pray for everybody here. Just lift up your hands. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, I just thank you that even as Matthew chapter 10, you gave your disciples. Thank you. There was, a, there was a release. There was an impartation into their life, and they received it. Lord, from you tonight, Lord, we receive. We receive. We receive your power. We receive your anointing. Lord, not only to be healed, but, Lord, to be an instrument of healing according to your word. We have it. We know how to give it. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, next Wednesday, I'll, I'll be back next Wednesday. And then after that, I'll be in, we'll, we'll going to Romania for about a week. I'll be back after about a week. We're building something. We're at a starting point. We've been, have been at it for a long time. We did, we've been at it for a long time to come to this starting point. Amen. I believe that, I believe in the next, next year I believe that we're going to be amazed at what God is going to do and I say that not not I, I, I prayed for these two people but that's not but it's going to be the whole body is going to be you ministering to people 
to be me ministering to people. Amen. God is equipping, God is preparing. And it's, the time has come. The time has come. It is now. Everybody say it now. Now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, Father, just bless every person here. And I thank you, Lord, that you have brought us to the kingdom for such a time as this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. 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 God bless you. Shake hands and fellowship as you're, you're dismissed today.